Okay, so this is a little video on photosynthesis. I'm going to introduce photosynthesis here. And photosynthesis is a really important topic because it's going to come up a lot in the Leaving Cert Biology exam. It comes up most years, so it's best that you know it really well. And photosynthesis is the way in which green plants make food. So every organism needs food, but green plants can make their own food. They are autotrophic. So an autotrophic organism can automatically, we can, we can think of it that way, automatically make their own food. So autotrophic. They make their own food. All organisms need food. And we need food for things like growth, repair, defense, and energy. And energy is the one that I'm going to focus on here. So we need food for energy. Plants can make their own food. So where do they get the energy from? From the sun. So a plant has the ability to trap the sun's energy and turn it into food. Animals, on the other hand, need to eat the plant. So for example, a cow might eat the grass. And a human might eat the cow. So it's a very simple food chain there. The plant can take the energy from the sun and turn it into food. The plant in this instance is making the food for itself. It's not making the food for the cow. But the cow has figured out that if it eats the plant, it can get energy. And the human can eat the cow and so on and so forth. What can't happen, the cow cannot get energy from the sun. Only the plant can do that. And the difference between the cow or the animal and the plant is that the plant contains chlorophyll. So if you recall the video that I did on the structure of the cell, I mentioned that the plant cell contains something called chloroplast. So let's have a look at a leaf. Here's a, a rough diagram of a leaf and I'm going to draw in some cells. Now cells are going to be a lot smaller than this by comparison to the leaf, but I'm going to draw some big cells. I'm going to draw one big cell here. Okay, so this is out of proportion, but we'll call this a cell. And inside in the cell, we have structures called chloroplasts. This is in the plant cell only, chloroplasts. And the chloroplast is the part of the plant where photosynthesis occurs. And inside in the chloroplast is a green pigment called chlorophyll. We'll call this the chlorophyll. And here lies the difference between the plant and the animal. The animal does not contain chlorophyll. Some types of bacteria have it. Some types of bacteria can carry out photosynthesis. We'll focus on the green plant for now. So chlorophyll has the ability to absorb sunlight. And it is in this way that the plant can actually take the energy from the sun and combine it with a few other things. So what are those other things? Well, we all know the plants, they need water and they get this water from the soil. And they need carbon dioxide, which they get from the air. So the plant has the ability to combine water from the soil, carbon dioxide from the air, and the sun's energy to make a food called glucose. So let's have a little look at the equation for photosynthesis. I'm going to write the word equation first. So the plant needs carbon dioxide and water and light energy in the presence of chlorophyll. And with these things, the plant can make glucose, C6, Oh, I'm doing the word equation here, actually. So I'm just going to write glucose there for now. So glucose and oxygen is also produced. Let's have a look at the chemical equation now. So carbon dioxide, 6 CO2 plus 6 H2O plus light energy. In the presence of chlorophyll, So the chlorophyll is not used up. 
So that's why we, we draw the chlorophyll here above the arrow. These are the ingredients. This, the chlorophyll, needs to be present in order to trap the light energy, but it's not used up in the reaction. And then glucose, C6, H12, O6, and oxygen, 6O2. So this is the chemical equation for photosynthesis, and you definitely need to know this. It is a balanced equation. That's why we have the numbers in it. So if we have a look over here on this left side of the line, you will see that there are six carbons there. And if we have a look over here, there are also six carbons. That means it is balanced. So that's the equation for photosynthesis. Let's take a closer look at what the plant needs, where does it get these things from, and then have a look at what it produces and what it does with what it produces. So carbon dioxide first, CO2. Where does the plant get its CO2 from? As we mentioned, it gets them from the air. So from the air, and it comes in through the leaves, through little pores called stomata. So on the underside of leaves, we have these tiny little pores or holes called stomata. And the plant can use these pores to draw carbon dioxide in from the air and let oxygen out. There's another place, though, that the plant can get its carbon dioxide from, and that is as a byproduct of respiration. In other words, the plant carries out another reaction, and this is called respiration. Respiration is the opposite to photosynthesis. So the plant produces carbon dioxide during respiration and it holds on to that carbon dioxide and then it has a little bit where it can use to carry out photosynthesis. Now the next thing that the plant needs for photosynthesis is water, H2O. And the plant gets the water from the soil. And it comes in through the roots. by a process called osmosis. There's another place where the plant can get the water and that is also as a byproduct of respiration. So the plant during respiration produces water, holds onto it and it can use it then for photosynthesis. Light energy, mentioned this already, the plant gets the light energy from the sun. from the sun. It can absorb it using the chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is very important for absorbing light energy. And there's another place, so in horticulture, which is when people want to grow a vast amount of plants as quickly as possible. In horticulture, in a greenhouse, the plant can get the light energy from lamps. Okay. They are the things the plant needs. Chlorophyll it needs as well. Might as well mention that down here again. Chlorophyll. Where does the plant get it from? It's present in the chloroplast of plant cells. So the chloroplast is where photosynthesis takes place. They are the things that the plant requires. Glucose is something that the plant produces. So where does the plant, or what does the plant, I should say, do with the glucose? So glucose. It can burn it in respiration to release the energy. So respiration is the way that we burn food to release energy and plants do this as well. So here we have glucose, the plant has made it and inside in the glucose we have carbon which came from the carbon dioxide, hydrogen which came from the water, oxygen which came from the carbon dioxide. But also trapped within this glucose is the light energy, the energy from the sun. So the plant has effectively produced the glucose, it has energy stored within it, and later on, when the plant wants to take that energy and use it for something like growth, the plant then carries out respiration. So 
it breaks down the glucose to release the energy. There are a few other things that the plant can do with the glucose. Glucose is a carbohydrate and it is specifically a monosaccharide. So mono means one. So here we have glucose. These are glucose units. And they are mono, meaning one, saccharides. The plant has produced this in photosynthesis. Now if the plant has had good conditions, plenty of sun, plenty of water, plenty of carbon dioxide, it will make as much glucose as it can. But if it has more glucose than it needs for energy, for respiration, then what it will do is it will link up all of these monosaccharides to create a polysaccharide, and poly means many. So here we have a polysaccharide, and it is many glucose units, or many sugar units, linked together. This particular polysaccharide is starch. So the second thing that the plant can do with the glucose that it makes in photosynthesis is turn it into starch. And starch is for storage. So the plant can now store away the starch for later. And when conditions aren't so good for photosynthesis, when there isn't a lot of sunlight or carbon dioxide or water, the plant has this store of starch which it can draw on to release its energy later if required. There is another polysaccharide, though, that the plant can produce from its glucose, from its monosaccharide, and that is cellulose. And cellulose, again, it is many glucose units linked together, but this time they're linked in a different way. This polysaccharide is called cellulose. And if you watched the video that I did on biolog.ie, which was called the structure of the cell, you would see that cellulose is used to build cell walls in plants. And it's only plants that have cell walls. So on biolog.ie you will find another video which is about the structure of the cell. So the plant can convert its glucose that it makes in photosynthesis into cellulose and it can use this cellulose then to build cell walls. So there are three things that the plant can do with the glucose. What else did the plant produce during photosynthesis? Oxygen. So this is our last component of the equation. Oxygen. And most of us know that we breathe in oxygen. We animals breathe in oxygen. Plants let it out. So the plant releases the oxygen through the stomata, the same way that it brought the carbon dioxide in through the stomata. And this provides the oxygen then that we breathe in. The other thing that the plant can do with the oxygen is use it in respiration, because like I mentioned, respiration is the opposite of photosynthesis. So anything over here in photosynthesis would be the on the other side of the line in respiration. So if the plant makes glucose in photosynthesis, it breaks it down in respiration. If the plant makes oxygen in photosynthesis, it needs it for respiration. Now they are the basics of photosynthesis. It's the introduction. The next thing that we need to learn about photosynthesis is the exact process, the light stage and the dark stage. Exactly how does the plant carry out photosynthesis? I think this video has been long enough, so I'm going to leave that for another video. And if you just keep an eye on biolog.ie, you will find that video. Okay?